And what do you guys do? How do you treat tropical trees in Florida? What's the what's the general rule? Repotting in the spring. Grow it out. Right. Cut it back. Grow it out. Cut it back. Right. You grow it out for health. You cut it back for <coughs> for styling purposes. You can work on these trees virtually all year round. I like to repot Florida pines in late February because it's they're a little bit low. They're not very active, even though they're growing. They're, they're dormant enough that you can do some gentle root pruning and repot it. And the heat is coming fast enough that the tropical side of it is able to activate and it stays healthy. So this is a result of laziness, okay? If you let it go, a slash pine in particular, the needles will get very long. They will get even longer than this. Now that's a kind of a cool look, okay? It's like a kind of Florida style. The problem is though, all these long needles shade out the inside and down below, and it's only a matter of time before I lose the lower branches. By then it becomes cousin it again. Needs a haircut. Uh, this is an interesting experiment. We were talking before. There have been various experiments over the years because of the needle problem in Florida to find a way of how you can graft stock with smaller needles onto stuff with roots that like Florida. Okay? And the problem is, is if the foliage comes from a tree from outside of Florida, not only does it get needle cast and is subject to the fungus, but the problem is, spruit, okay, I said tropicals, right? I haven't repotted this in just under two years. Look how much it's risen out of the pot, okay? This is a pine tree, okay? A pine tree rising out of a pot it, a ficus, yes, pines rarely, but local <coughs> pines grow fast, strong root system, they'll push their way out of a pot. I have a pond pine that I didn't wire into the pot, it was just a training pot, okay? The, the tree, the tap root, which has grown into a further trunk below it, has grown this much <laughs> in the last four years. So the, it's sticking out of the pot, so I can lower the the soil around it slowly and i will have a bigger fatter trunk down and below. you can see that it's not quite as thick and nor does it grow as fast but it's enough when you hide it with foliage to pull off the illusion you mentioned a white pine this tree gets treated like a white pine you pinch the tips you wire it gently and you force the growth back and then you got to separate, like there's stuff in here growing in the wrong direction. I need to rewire. It's been a while. Once again, come back to see la under laziness. This was purposeful laziness. The idea of that was to basically give you guys something that I could show you and we could work on. So how do you tell the difference between all these different pines that you um, rattle off the names of? <laughs> well, some of it's where you live. I mean... Um, a sand pine is called the sand pine because it lives in grows in sand. Soil. So if you see a pine in very sandy soil and it's very small, thin needles, then it's the sand pine. Chances up here you get a lot of loblolly pines, particularly as you go further north. Okay. Um, you know how some people after a while they get allergic to the sap mm -hmm. from, um, from um, ficus trees? I work on these things so much that I've developed a really bad allergy to the, uh, to the, uh, to the sap of the, the pine tree. This is the, the Van Lanningham approach. Okay. Okay. With these, with pine trees, when you're handling your pines, you want to come from the bottom and you want to pull up. Okay. You want to pull from the bottom up. You don't want to, so you, you want to, you know, protect the foliage because like I said, it's important. So I'm going to take this thing and I'm just going to, can I just dump it on the ground for now? Yeah. Okay. So I'm first off, now I'm doing this not only to give myself a better idea of the structure, but I also want to 
let light in. So okay. How, how much are you leaving? About a fifth? Yeah. Or what like, was, I'll leave. Know? I'll leave anywhere from a quarter to half an inch. A super cut half inch. Right, <laughs> super cut <laughs> half inch, and my flat, rates flat are top. much less, but there's no shampoo included. <laughs> no massage either. <laughs> I don't know where you what super cut you go to, well, the but I'm interested massage. in finding out. It's called so, the Coach's Special. <laughs> Have you seen that commercial? No. Yeah. Yeah, I've watched videos, and I think, oh, I want these short leaves, and then some of the people on there just whack the leaves off like this, and I think, oh, I like that approach. But I didn't know if I was going to ask Jason about it. I, ask him I usually would do this question. with old needles on pines when I do like um, after in the, in the in the early spring when I cut the twos I'll cut the old needles just so I know that those are last year's those needles. are last year's needles. so when I needle pluck the ones that are cut are last year's those are the ones those I are the off. ones you can pull off this does the same purpose. you could say well look you know I'm following I'm following you know I'm I'm letting you see the tree as it would be I one time decided at the winter silhouette show that I was going to show a, I don't know if it was a buttonwood I did or, but what I did was I didn't defoliate it because our trees, these tropical trees don't defoliate. And the symbol of the winter was where I live. I'm in Brevard, so I'm the half zone difference. The, um, the, the, what you saw was I see kingfishers in October, November, December. So I had a scroll of a kingfisher. But, you know, you're, you're, you're competing with people from around the country. It's a winter silhouette show, and they want to see the winter silhouette that they believe it should be. So, showing this in a Florida style like this, um, there, is a, there is something tempting about it, but for people outside the country, they're just going to see a shaggy, unkept tree and you'll lose. And well, I mean, winning's not necessarily important, but I think people will get what you're trying to to. to. I think it's got quercetin in it, right. which is uh, a yeah. relative of. Um, pineapple. What is it? Relative of. Uh, pineapple, right? No, well, it's it pineapple. No, no, um, oh, it smells like it's 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 anti Dominance means it wants to grow to from the top, okay? Its initial instinct of the tree is to push out growth up top so it can become the tallest branch and then can leave. It's like an internal competition. Once the lower branches go, once you lose foliage from the lower branches, you've lost the lower branches. Lower branches and growing back in pines it just you're not gonna you're not you're gonna be very unhappy so when you start to do all this when you start to hit everything um you, you you're harder up here than you are here you always make sure that your branches going out and low are stronger than the branches on top because when you shock the tree and the tree goes Oh my God, I lost all this foliage. Its instinct will be to kill everything low down and push out. You reverse that by weakening the top where it goes, oh my God, we have to strengthen the side branches so I have enough energy to push through the top. And that helps how it all works. What about sunlight? How much sunlight? Sun, 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 sun. Think of every pine tree you see. It's all, it wants as much sun as it possibly can get. Full sun. And can you keep that out all year? All year. Um, if it freezes, I will, I will bring it in because although it can handle a cold, um, it, you know, frost is something that just doesn't happen very often and it will strain the tree. So why, you know, I mean, obviously this tree, I don't, right here I took a lot of leaves off, a lot of, of, a lot of needles off just because of the way it cut. And if you come up and take a look, uh, if I come back, you'll see that area grow out anyway. It, it, it's really, they're really, truly resilient and tough, uh, which is the other advantage.
to how long are the pine, native how, trees. How long are the pond pine needles compared to these? The problem with the pond pine, which I'm still wrestling with, is, and we were, I was talking to Mike about this, is their growth pattern is very lanky. Yeah. Okay. To beat it back, it's like a full time. It's like the hackberry of pine trees. Yeah. You know, it, it wants to grow lanky and you're fighting with it the whole way. That's the only disadvantage of it, but you can. The ones that are really nice, if you can get it, um, they don't want to stay smaller. They do well, but the spruce pines. So you can, if you find a spruce pine in a can, in a nursery can, and it's gonna be, it wants to be about, wants to be about this tall, and right. it will survive. Anything smaller, it, it's not happy. As that grows up through all of this, then you'll start, what I would start to do now, once that happens, is I'll start to then thin out the needles even more around the buds. So you're removing, you wait till the buds are strong enough that you know that you're not going to kill them by loosening them. Then you start to remove the needles around it slowly and when it comes to show time, you'll have needles this long that aren't cut, that you grew out yourself, okay? This is a really rough and dirty example of what I wanted to do, but I think it gives you an idea. It's beautiful. Okay. Um, what's nice about this tree is, which you could tell, is that all my effort over the years of building structure is starting to pay off. Okay, you, you're having you're having everything. I'll probably need I'll probably pull this down a little. I could rewire it now, but like I said, this is a little bit late to do this. So I'm not going to push it real hard. It's just that, you know. But I will try to bring this tree back for the joy of bonsai in a uh, in a in a circuit in the proper pot and you can see what